Welcome to an example of integration using trig substitution. However, before applying trig substitution, we should recognize that basic u substitution won't work because if we try to let u equal 16 minus 9x squared, notice that du would be negative 18x dx, which does not fit the form of the integral. Next, when applying trig substitution, the integral involves the square root, and notice how we have this quantity raised to the three-halves power. So for the next step, let's write this in radical form. Remember, if we have a raised to a fractional power, or m divided by n power, we can write this as a radical, where this is equal to the nth root of a. So the denominator tells us the index raised to the mth power. So the numerator is the exponent, which means we can rewrite this as the integral where the denominator would be the square root, since the denominator of the fractional exponent is two, of 16 minus 9x squared, and this would be raised to the third power, because the numerator of the exponent is three. From here, we should recognize that the integral involves a square root of the form the square root of a squared minus x squared. However, notice it's not a perfect fit, because if we wrote this in this form, it would actually be the square root of four squared for 16, and not just minus x squared, it'd be minus three x squared to get the nine x squared. So instead of using a substitution x equals a sine theta, we'll use a substitution three x equals a sine theta. So we'll use the substitution three x equals four sine theta, if we solve this for x, we'd have x equals four-thirds sine theta, and therefore differential x is equal to four-thirds cosine theta d theta. Now for a quick review, if the integral involved the square root of a squared plus x squared, we would let x equal a tangent theta, and if we had the square root of x squared minus a squared, we'd let x equal a secant theta but ours fits the form of the square root of a squared minus x squared. Now before we perform this substitution, let's sketch a reference triangle for angle theta. Notice here we know that sine theta must equal three x divided by four. So if we sketch a right triangle and call this angle theta, the opposite side can be labeled three x and the hypotenuse can be labeled four and therefore using the Pythagorean theorem, this leg here would be labeled the square root of four squared minus three x squared or 16 minus nine x squared. Now let's go ahead and perform our substitution. dx is equal to four thirds cosine theta d theta. Let's factor out the four thirds. And then we have cosine theta d theta and our denominator is going to simplify nicely to a cosine theta, or four cosine theta, but let's go ahead and show why. We're going to have the square root of 16 minus nine x squared. Well, if three x equals four sine theta, nine x squared equals 16 sine squared theta. All this is raised to the third power. Now let's take a closer look at the square root of 16 minus 16 sine squared theta. We could write that as the square root of 16 times the quantity, one minus sine squared theta, where the square root of 16 is four, and then one minus sine squared theta equals cosine squared theta, and the square root of cosine squared theta would be cosine theta. So now we can write this as four thirds times integral of cosine theta d theta divided by, again this would be four cosine theta, but this is still raised to the third power. So let's continue simplifying this on the next slide. Well four of the third would be 64, so let's go ahead and factor out one sixty-fourth since that's in the denominator. So we'd have four thirds times one sixty-fourth times integral of we'd have cosine divided by cosine cubed. 
leaving us with two factors of cosine in the denominator, or cosine squared. This product simplifies. There's one four and four and sixteen fours and sixty-four. So we have one forty-eighth times the integral of one over cosine squared is equal to secant squared theta. And this works out perfectly because the integral of secant squared theta equals tangent theta. So this is equal to one forty-eighth tangent theta plus c. Remember our goal here is to write this in terms of x, not theta. So to determine tangent theta, we'll use a reference triangle that we sketched at the beginning of the problem. Notice here the tangent of theta would be equal to the ratio of the opposite side to the adjacent side, or three x, divided by the square root of sixteen minus nine x squared. So we can write this as one forty-eighth times three x divided by the square root of sixteen minus nine x squared plus c. Notice how we can simplify three and forty-eight. There's one three and three and sixteen threes and forty-eight. So let's go ahead and write this as the numerator would be one times x or x. The denominator would be sixteen times the square root of sixteen minus nine x squared plus c. This would be the antiderivative in terms of x. I hope you found this helpful.